Ready. All right, I'm ready. Hey everyone, Eric Rodebois. So I'm gonna do a little conversation about what happens after your contract is terminated. So here's the scenario. You're working for a company and you sign an independent contractor agreement. Now, real quick, there's generally two ways that people work for a company. The main way, the normal way, the, the majority way is under an employment agreement, whether that's an oral agreement or a written agreement, but it's an employment relationship and you'll get a paycheck, there'll be withholdings, there'll be taxes, you'll get a W-2 at the end of the year, and that's the much more traditional path. And sometimes there'll be an employment agreement um, or sometimes there'll just be an offer, sometimes there'll be uh, an employment handbook. And so what happens is at the end of the relationship, now actually let me go back to the other way. So the other way that people work is under a contract. So it's generally an independent contractor is gonna be for a defined term or for a defined project. So sometimes I'll hire someone, hey, I just want you to do this specific thing. And sometimes it'll be informal and sometimes it'll be formal. Now, I'm in the business of making things formal because, and I'll tell you why, if everything goes wrong and everything goes sideways, and I bet if I watch all of my videos, I've said this like 50 times, if you don't care and you could walk away with no problems and move on with your life, then great. You don't need a contract, you don't need a lawyer, you don't need a consultation, you don't need legal advice. But if it would be harmful to yourself or your family or your finances and something that would get you really upset and maybe it's gonna put you in a position where somebody owes you a lot of money, you don't wanna be in the situation where you're going to a lawyer then and the lawyer's like, okay, let me see the contract and you're like, well, I don't have one, okay? So this is literally the moral of my life, my professional life, is if it's important, let's get it in writing. And so what happens is in every contractual relationship, every single one, whether it's the employment contract, the independent contractor agreement, the joint venture agreement, the partnership agreement, the shareholders agreement, whatever it is, everybody goes in with the wrong mindset. Let me say that again. Everybody who goes into a contract is going into it with the wrong mindset. And I'll tell you why. Because you wouldn't be doing it in the first place if you weren't excited. So all you're looking for is the upside all the great things that are gonna happen. But that's not the point of a contract. A, a, a friend of mine was talking about his shareholders agreement with his partner, and I use the partner colloquially in that situation. It is a corporation and each of them owns shares in the corporation, so they're technically co-shareholders. But in any case, they have a shareholders agreement between the partners, because there's two of them. And what he said is, yeah, we signed it 15 years ago and it's gathering dust in some drawer somewhere and I hope I never need to pull it out because that's the point, right? The point is that if everything's happy and everyone's good, then we don't need to go back to the contract. But it's when things are going sideways, it's when things are bad, it's when the, the relationship is breaking up, it's when you've been fired or you've been told that your services are no longer necessary or you're, or you're in a fight, that's when you go back to the contract. And so when I say that people go into the, the, the relationship with the wrong mindset, it's because all you're looking for is the upside, but the only time that you're gonna need a lawyer is if there's downside. So the mindset you need to be having when you're walking into the contract negotiation, because that's what it should be, is you need to be negotiating, okay, if things don't go great, what will happen? And I know that's a really hard thing to put yourself in. It's like getting married and already planning your divorce. But that's exactly what it is, right? And so if you take the time to go ahead and plan out, okay, I love you, let's get married. I hope we never get divorced. I hope our prenup gathers dust forever in a drawer. And I hope that we never cheat on each other and we love each other and we have a great time and we end up dying in each other's arms 100 years from now. But in any other scenario, if things go sideways, if we no longer like each other, if we're in a fight, if we're getting a divorce, let's have a prenup. Let's have something solid in place to protect ourselves. So I'll give the most classic example, severance. Almost nobody ever has severance in their employment agreement. Now, most of the time the employee shows up for the job, the employer gives them the contract and the employee's not thinking, okay, so in three years from now, when I get fired, what am I gonna be entitled to? Because nobody thinks that way. But you should, you should go to the lawyer and say, hey lawyer, I need to pay you for a consultation. I was given this contract by my employer and I need someone to tell me what would happen if I get fired three years from now. And so that's where the lawyer can say, well, it says nothing about severance. And by the way, by law, you're not entitled to anything. We're in Florida, which is not a pro worker state. So if you want a severance someday, 
you need to have it in writing. So the lawyer needs to go say, hey, I suggest that we negotiate a severance. Maybe for every year that you're employed there, you get a month of paid severance if the relationship is terminated without cause. Well, that's a very reasonable thing to negotiate. And so you need to negotiate that and put it in writing. So guys, remember if you have any takeaway when you're entering into a relationship, whether it's as an employee or as a contractor, you need to plan your exit and have that mindset when you're negotiating your agreement. And that way, when the ex exit happens, you're like, oh, okay, I've already thought about this. Here's what our contract says. Here's what I'm entitled to. If you guys have any questions about that, please leave a comment below. Um, this is probably the thing I talk about the most in my life. Thank you.